Thanks for joining me again for the EQ7 Jumpstart Sew Along. This is the Block 2 lesson. Let's get started. Open EQ7, and this time in the Project Helper window, click on the Open an Existing Project tab. We're going to open the project file that we saved in the first lesson. Remember that we named the project Jumpstart Sew Along. Your project will probably be listed under the Most Recently Used Projects section. Click on the file name to select it, and then click OK. The sketchbook will appear on your screen. Remember that the sketchbook holds all the ingredients for our quilt designs. Click the block section on the left, and you'll see the four blocks that we copied from the block library in the first lesson. Now click the quilt section on the left. The quilt we created in lesson one will be selected, because it's the only quilt layout that we've saved so far. Click the edit button, and the quilt is now on the quilt work table. Click the Set Block tool on the right toolbar, and then click the Eccentric Star block in the Blocks palette. Remember the blue outline lets us know that that's the selected block. Click the lower left block space on the quilt to pop the block into place. Now let's talk fabric. Click the Paintbrush tool on the right toolbar, the fabric palette appears with the default group of fabrics that EQ7 always starts with. Use the scroll bar under the swatches to see all the fabrics. You also have the option to use solid colors by clicking the Colors tab. And again, you can use the scroll bar underneath to see all the colors available. I'm going to click back on the Fabrics tab. Now this is a great group of fabrics to start with, but let's see how to add more fabrics to our project. On the top menu bar, click Libraries, Fabric Library. EQ7's Fabric Library has over 5,000 fabrics ready to use. These are fabrics from the top fabric companies that we've scanned for you. Now, the Fabric Library works just like the Block Library did that we used in the first lesson. I'm going to click this little minus sign to close this up, and here you can see that the fabric library is broken into three sections, by category, by color, and by manufacturer. I'm going to click the plus sign next to by color, and here you'll find fabrics that are separated by color. I'm just using the arrow key on my keyboard to scroll down through all the colors here. I know that I want to use some blue fabrics in my blocks, so here I am on the blue style. And then I can come over here and I can click on a swatch that I like to select it. Remember to look for the blue outline to know that's the selected swatch. And then I can come down here and click the Add to Sketchbook button. The swatch will disappear, letting me know that I've added it to my project. I'm going to add a few other blue fabrics here. And I encourage you to just click around in the fabric library for a while and add some different swatches to your project. So let's talk about some other ways to add fabrics to your EQ7. New fabrics are always being released, so you always want to be able to add new fabrics to your projects. There are several options available for adding more fabrics to EQ7. The first thing I'm going to talk about is scanning your own fabric. You may have fabric in your stash that you know that you're going to use in a project and you want to color your virtual quilts with those fabrics. Well, if you have a scanner, you can scan those fabrics and then import them into the fabric library. The key to a good fabric scan is prepping the fabric. Make sure that you press it to get rid of any wrinkles and that there's no lint or stray threads on the fabric. Every scanner has a slightly different set of settings to choose from. My basic guidelines for scanning your own fabric are these. Your resolution should be set to 72 to 75 dpi, and you should scan a section of fabric that's about 500 by 500 pixels. This size is usually sufficient to give you a good depiction of the fabric. You can go a little bit larger, but you don't want to have too many really large fabric scans in your EQ7 because it may get a bit sluggish trying to deal with all of those really large files. Now, another option that your scanner may or may not have is called D-Screen or something called Magazine. It's an option that will keep the weave of your fabric from creating a moiré effect on screen. And if you're not familiar with moiré, it's that 
weird pattern that you can sometimes get on screens. Uh, think of somebody on TV wearing a striped shirt that kind of makes that crazy pattern. That's what Moray does. And a de-screen or magazine option can help get rid of that. And once you've scanned your fabric file, you should save it as a JPEG file. I created a folder on my computer and called it My Fabric Scans to hold all my fabric files. After you've saved your scans, here's how to import them into EQ7. Here in the Fabric Library, click the Import button and choose From Image Files. Here, next to Look In, I can navigate to the folder where I've stored my scans. Like I said, I like to keep all of mine in a folder called My Fabric Scans. Here are the three files that I want to import. If I hold down the control key on my keyboard, I can click on all three and select them all at once, and then click the open button. Once they're here in the import results, you want to make sure that, sh that you still click the add to sketchbook for all three of these files to add it to your project. You can also add more fabrics to EQ7 by saving fabric images from online resources, downloading the free monthly downloads from doeq.com, and purchasing EQ Stash online from electricquilt.com. You can find more details about these options in the blog post that accompanies this sew along. Now click close to put the fabric library away. We're back on the quilt work table and the paintbrush tool is still selected so the fabric palette is still on the screen. Drag the scroll bar under the swatches all the way to the end. Your new fabrics will always be added to the end of the palette. Click on a swatch in the palette to select it. Remember to look for that blue outline around the swatch. Then click on a patch in the quilt to color it. Play around with coloring the blocks for a while. If you don't like the way something looks, just choose a different fabric and click again. Let's try out another coloring tool. Click the spray can tool on the right toolbar. This tool allows you to change the fabric in all matching patches in a block at the same time. Let's give it a try up here on this block. All of those yellow patches change to white in one click. When you're happy with your fabric choices, click Add to Sketchbook to save the quilt. Now we're going to print the pattern for the block that we added to our quilt today. On the right toolbar, click the Select tool, and then click on the eccentric star block. Remember to look for the green outline to know that it's the selected block. On the top menu bar, click the Print button, and this time choose Templates. My personal preference for this block would be to use the rotary cutting chart. But since I showed you that in the first lesson, I'm going to take you through printing the templates for this block. If you'd prefer to piece the block a different way, feel free to use those print styles instead. In the first lesson, we set our block size to be 9 inches, and you can see that's automatically selected for us here. If you'd like to change the size, click Custom Block Size here and type in a new size. Remember that in EQ7 you are working in finished sizes, which means the final size of the block after all the seams have been sewn. EQ7 adds the seam allowance for you, and you can see here that the standard quarter inch is set. Let's click the preview button to see what the templates look like. This block only has two templates, so everything fits on one sheet of paper nicely. If your pattern contains lots of patches, you may want to reposition the templates on the pages. Let's try that out. Click the Move button at the top, and then click on one of the templates and drag it around on the page. Now you also have the option to delete unwanted templates from the print preview. This is especially helpful for applique blocks. I'll show you how this works, but you won't want to follow along here if you're planning to print right now. To delete templates, click the delete button at the top, then click on one of the templates to select it. You'll see that the uh, outline turns red. Then you can click the delete key on your keyboard and the template will disappear. 
Now if you're ready to print, click the print button here at the top, or if you're not ready to print, you can click the close button, and then close again to return to the quilt work table. Click the save button to save all the work that we've done today. Now you can take your pattern and sew your block too. I can't wait to see everyone's blocks in the link up on May 30th.